can say that we love Him. Why? Because He first loves us. Amen. And so, anyway, I appreciate that, Miss Chris. Uh, Brother Larry, we appreciate this. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, I'd like for you to turn to the Gospel of Matthew. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 28. Chapter number 28. Uh, the resurrection of Christ is recorded in all four of the Gospel accounts, but we're going to look at Matthew's account this morning. And so Matthew chapter 28, we'll pick up reading in verse number 1, and we'll read down through verse number 8. And beloved, uh, there's a lot of things that, uh, that can be shared this morning in regard to the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the importance and the significance of it, especially as you and I as Christians. And beloved, this is one of the quintessential things in regard to salvation. Uh, Romans chapter 10 verse number 9 tells us that if thou shalt uh, confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now listen, I, I, I've encountered people uh, that don't believe in, in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But they say they're Christian and they say that they're saved. I say that they're deceived and that they're lost and that they need to get born again. Because this is one of the main theological doctrines of Christianity is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so, uh, beloved, uh, the significance of it, uh, this morning we're going to talk about uh, the forgiveness that the resurrection brings, the victory over the grave that resurrection brings, and a home in heaven that the resurrection brings. We're going to talk about these three things. And listen, there's much more. But I don't want to be, I don't, I don't want to reclaim my title as Brother Pharaoh, uh, and I'm not going to keep you here all day and, and be claimed that uh, I wouldn't let God's people go. He preached all the way until the evening service. Now, I'm not going to do that. Uh, there's other wonderful truths in regard to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But for time's sake, we're going to look at these three, which obviously has a lot of relevance for our lives here this morning. Amen. And so. Uh, Matthew chapter number 28. Let's pick up reading verse number 1. The Word of God declares it to us this morning, beloved. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to draw uh, dawn toward the first day of the week, and that's why we come to church on Sunday. The, the secular world, the first day of the week is on Monday. But for a believer, the first day of the week is what? Sunday. On Sunday. This is why we come to church on Sunday. As a memorial and reminder that Jesus Christ rose on Sunday. Amen. Amen. And so notice here, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him the keepers did shake and become as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear ye not. For I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples Word. Let's bow our heads and go to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord to bless the reading of the Scriptures this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for this day that we have set aside to acknowledge uh, your resurrection and the conquering of death and the grave, Heavenly Father. And Lord, we are so thankful and can rejoice, dear Lord, that you are alive forevermore and that you have ascended up on high and sat at the right hand side of the Father. And you did uh, uh, arise as you said. And just as you said that you would rise fr from the grave, dear Lord, you have also told us you are coming again. And Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for these wonderful truths. Lord, we are thankful for your love, your mercy, and your grace. And Lord, we are thankful for the many blessings that you've already freely bestowed upon each and every one of us this morning. And Heavenly Father, I pray now as we look to the bread of life this morning, I pray that you'd feed our spiritual souls. Heavenly Father, I ask and pray that you'd help me as I preach this morning. Give me that anointing of the Holy Ghost to preach the truth in love, dear Lord, and to, uh, 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 dear Lord, to be able to preach without uh, uh, stuttering and, and, and loss of and, uh, thought, dear Lord. I just pray that you'd help me this morning. And Lord, I pray, uh, Heavenly Father, if there's one here today, 
that does not know Thee as Lord and Savior. Lord, I pray that You convict their heart of sin, that You draw them into Yourself, and that they come forward today and be saved before it's eternally too late. And Lord, we just thank You and praise You for what You've done. We thank You and praise You for what You're going to do. For it's in Christ's name we do ask and pray these things. And Amen. amen. Notice here we see Matthew's account of uh, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And uh, notice here verse number 6, the angel's telling the, uh, the women, He is not here, for He is risen, as He said. Now, beloved, you go through and you read the Old Testament Scriptures at all points to the cross. Uh, beloved, today we look back to the cross. But, beloved, there's one thing that's common about this. One individual who is the foundation, it is Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And just as He told His disciples that uh, He would die and on the third day must be raised again, uh, we read the Old Testament Scriptures that prophesy about this. Uh, beloved, just as He said, He did die on the cross. Amen. He did shed His blood for all of mankind. And bless God, they did put Him in that grave. And bless God, as He said, He did arise and conquer death in the grave. Bless just God. as He said. Bless and beloved, just as He said, He was going to rise. He said, Behold, one day I'm going to come back. I come quickly. He is coming again. Amen. Glory to God. I hope that you're ready to meet Him. Amen. And friend, if you're here this morning and you're not ready to meet Him, you need to get ready because He said, in the, in the hour, the day and hour that you think, you know not. He comes as a thief in the night. And so, beloved, the lesson to be learned from that is we need to be prepared and we need to be ready. Is your heart ready? Is your home ready to meet God this morning? Amen. Amen. I certainly hope that it is. <laughs> uh, but, beloved, uh, uh, we rejoice uh, in this day that we've set aside uh, uh, acknowledging the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In His resurrection, He conquered death in the grave. And beloved, we know that the Word of God tells us for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so beloved, when you get saved, glory to God, you've been set free from the penalty and the condemnation of sin. The Bible tells us in the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse number 32, and you shall know the truth. Yeah. I'm not talking about knowing about the truth. Yeah. Do you know the truth? The truth is Jesus Christ. Amen. John 14, 6, he declares and he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father Amen. but by me. Amen. And you shall know the truth. Is there a, can you go back to that day and time that you called upon the name of the Lord and asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart and save you? And you know and you know him then as Lord and Savior. Amen. John 8, 32, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. John chapter 8, verse 36, just a few verses later. If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. And beloved, when you got saved, you were set free from the condemnation and the wrath of God that abided upon you and I as sinners. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We've been set free. We're no longer enslaved from the penalty of sin and the bondage of sin. He has set us free. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, so many people today still live in the bondage of sin. You've been set free. You've been set free. And so, beloved, the Bible tells us we all know these verses. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 and 24. For all have sinned. Anybody ever tells you I've never sinned, they just did. That's right. <laughs> they may have had a perfect streak up until then, they just ruined it. That's right. The, the fact of the matter is we all stand guilty before God. Amen. For all have sinned yeah. and come short of the glory of God. But notice verse 24. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. We've been justified freely by His grace. For by grace are you saved through faith yeah. and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. He paid for my sin. He paid for your sin. He paid for the world's sin on the cross of Calvary and tasted death for every man. And the devil thought he won when they took him off that cross and put him in a tomb. And the devil and all the demons of hell rejoiced 
and celebrate it. But on that resurrection morning, glory to God, He arose and He proved Satan on the head and conquered death and the grave. Then you and I can be set free from the penalty and the wages of sin. Glory to God. Oh, I'll tell you what, that's something to rejoice about this morning, church. Romans chapter 6, verse 18 tells us, being then made free from sin. When you got saved, you were set free. Glory to God. Amen. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. All things were passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You repented. And that old wicked lifestyle that you once were living, that held you bondage, that enslaved you, Christ sets you free, and now you become a servant of righteousness because you're a child of God. Amen. And then the Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 5, verse number 1, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Listen, Jesus Christ set you free. He took you out of the miry clay. He got you out of the pig pen. Why would you ever want to go back and get yourself weighed down and tangled back up with that once Christ has set you free from it? And so, beloved, His forgiveness, uh, forgiveness, uh, His resurrection, forgiveness, set free from the penalty of sin. You know, His resurrection signifies victory over, over the grave. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 54 and 55, the Word of God tells us, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? You know, I understand Hebrews 9, 27 tells us, supported the man wants to die. Then after this, the judgment. If we all live long enough, we're all going to die a physical death. But glory to God, as a child of God, when we and I get saved, and praise be to God, when He resurrected and come out of that grave, He conquered death in the grave. Let me tell you something. This old body may die, but will not experience the sting of death. Does that make sense? Amen. You know, I, I heard a message earlier this week. Now, I don't know how true this is, uh, but I uh, uh, heard a message earlier this week. This man was driving down the road. He and his son were in a car. And it was, I guess, this time of year, maybe some time of year, windows were down. And his little boy was terrified of bees. I ain't going to say I'm terrified of them, but I just don't like riding with them. And anyway, he was going down the highway, and a bee got into the vehicle. And his little boy just got completely terrified because he was afraid that that bee was going to sting him. Now, I remember when I was about five years old, out on the carport, uh, Mom and Dad hadn't had it closed in yet. It used to be an open carport. I was outside playing, and Carolyn, I don't know, I'm sure what Carolyn was doing, but she was there, and Mom was in the kitchen, I'm pretty sure, and I got stung by a hornet. God, you thought I, you thought I was going to die on the spot. And if they are running there, I got stung, I got stung, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. Mom looked at me, and she's like, son, you're going to be okay. It hurt a little bit. It'll go away. And Carol, she's just laughing about it. <laughs> I don't know if you remember this or not, Carol. You know, remember, uh, you see, you never, never remember those things. Did you? <laughs> but anyway, that, that, that sting hurt. I felt pain. And so this little boy was started, like I was doing, pitching a fit because that bee was there and he would get stung. Now, now, this is where I, I, I vary a little bit, I guess, for most people. But I'm going to tell you something. If a bee, a yellow jacket, a wasp, or a hornet get in the car with me, I'm not going to try to catch him and take the stinger out. I'm going to try to kill him. <laughs> and you call me cruel or whatever you want to, but I'm going I'm I'm to kill that wasp or that bee. This man pulls over, grabs the bee, and takes the stinger out of the bee. And tells the son, and son, don't worry about it. That bee's flying around here, but the sting is gone. His stinger's gone. 
And beloved, that's exactly what Jesus Christ has done for you and I in regard to death and the grave. We live long enough we may die, but you and I as a child of God will not experience the sting of death. Amen. Our sins have been forgiven. Amen. Our sins have been washed by the blood. And just the same God that raised up Jesus Christ in the resurrection will raise you and I up. And our spirit and our soul to be absent from the body is what? To be present with the Lord. Amen. And so that sting of death has been taken away. And so when we read the scriptures in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, if you're saved this morning, you can claim this truth. Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? Because Jesus Christ conquered death in the grave and because of our position in Him and because He is in us, we also are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. And you and I will conquer death in the grave. Glory to the Lamb this morning. Glory to the Lamb. Hey, some people look at me. Sometimes I'm half crazy. Uh, they start talking about cancer and aren't you afraid to die? Let me tell you something. Do I want to die? No, I don't. I want to spend as much time with my wife and my family and with my friends just as much as anybody else. But I'm not afraid of death. Amen. And when God calls me home, uh, beloved, I can rest assured, I done told Christy, I said, when I die, I said, don't cry. And I said, I know I'm wasting my time. She'll, she'll cry, he's gone, he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Lord, I hope she don't do that. I'll come back harder she does. <laughs> but I said, don't, I said, don't, 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 don't shed tears for me. Because I'm going to be in a whole lot better place than you are. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to be with the Lord. And I'm going to be healed. And I'm going to enter into the joy and the rest of Jesus Christ. That's nothing to mourn about. Now, beloved, I'm not going to go out here on South Cumberland now and say, the next 18 wheeler comes through. I'm not going to walk out in front of him and tell God. I'm not going to do that. But when God has said, I've reached that point in time and he calls me home, I'm ready to go. Because I know, I know that Jesus Christ resides in my heart in the form of the Holy Spirit. And I know the very time that I take my last breath here upon this earth, I'm going to be with Him in glory. Now, if that's not victory, I don't know what is, beloved. And so, yes, we all, we, we may die, but we won't experience the sting of death. Does everybody understand that? Everybody understand that? The Bible tells us in uh, Romans chapter 4, verses 24 and 25, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on Him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. His resurrection is what allows our justification. The word justification, if you, if you look at it, it's a, a legal term, but to give it to you in layman's term, when God sees us as children of God, He sees us just as if we had not sinned. Why is that possible? He said, preacher, I don't understand. God has said all of sin to come short of the glory of God. That is true. But when you and I get saved, not our righteousnesses, no, we don't have anything to bring to God, but the righteousness of Christ is placed upon us. Amen. And then when God looks at you and I as His children, He doesn't see us for the wicked, vile sinners that we are. He sees His sons righteousness and he sees us as though we have never sinned. Amen. Now I don't know about you, Brother Larry, but that ought to bring joy to our soul this morning, brother. We ought to rejoice for the great gift of salvation. We ought to be thankful for forgiveness. We ought to be thankful for justification. We ought to be thankful for eternal security this morning. That's right. Romans chapter 8 verse number 11 tells us, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead dwell in you. He, now get this, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. The same spirit that raised up Jesus Christ 
is the same Holy Spirit that resides in you and I. And if it raised up Christ in the day of resurrection, it will raise you and I up. Glory to God. Amen. Uh, he is the life. He is the resurrection. Glory to God. And so, beloved, that's something to rejoice about, is it not, this morning? Uh, beloved, it's major doctrine for Christianity. As I mentioned, it's essential for salvation that you believe the written record that God gives us of His Son, Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 10, verse number 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, yeah. thou shalt be saved. Listen, I, I've had people tell me, I, yeah, I, I believe in Jesus. I, I, I believe in Jesus, but I don't believe, you, I, I don't believe you're resurrected. I don't believe that at all. Let me tell you something, you're not saved. Amen. Because the Word of God plainly declares that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that what? God hath raised him from the dead, yeah. the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thou shalt be saved. Amen. If you don't believe that, bless you, Lord. You've got our problem. Amen. If you don't believe that, you're not born again. Right. I'll go on that and go ahead and say it right now. Email may be full this week. I may get a bunch of text, but that's okay. That's the Word of God. Right. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 14 tells us, Knowing that He which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up, raise up us also by Jesus and shall, uh, uh, shall present us with you. Now listen. God raised up Jesus Christ as His children. He's going to raise us up. Amen. He gives us that Word. He gives us that promise. Amen. First Peter chapter 1, verse number 3. Blessed be the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again into a, get this now, a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He's alive. He's living. He's real. He's at the right hand side of the Father. Beloved, He's real this morning. What the hope that you and I have in Jesus Christ. It's real. It's living this morning. I'll tell you what, a lot of people have hope in a lot of things. And that hope is misplaced. Beloved, when it comes to eternity, when it comes to heaven, you better have your hope in Jesus Christ. That's right. You know, a lot of people, all these reality shows, and they hope they get enough fan votes to make it on to the next round. They hope they get enough uh, votes from the committee to make the playoffs. They hope they, they get enough votes to make it into office. Let me tell you something, the hope that you and I have, it's real. Amen. And it's living. Amen. And it's in Jesus Christ. Uh, and how about last of all, how about last of all, His resurrection secures us a heavenly home in God's glorious heaven. Amen. Yeah. In John chapter 14, verses 1 and 2, the Word of God tells us, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Amen. And if He's going to prepare a place for us, He will come again. Amen. He will Amen. come again. Yes, Amen. Uh, this portion of Scripture I'm about to share with you, uh, sometimes... It's controversial. There's a lot of debate. There's some people who believe that there's absolutely no spiritual significance to this. Uh, some people say that there's no Jewish custom to this. But in the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 3 through 7, as we look at John's account of the resurrection, in John, chapter 20, verses 3 through 7, the Word of God tells us, Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the sepulcher. The other disciple talking about John. So they ran both together. And the other, uh, other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulcher. Verse 5. And he stooping down and looking in saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulcher and saith the linen clothes lie and the napkin that was about his head not lying with the linen clothes but wrapped together in a place by itself. Uh, beloved, uh, uh, in the Jewish custom back in the days of that time, 
When a master went and sat down at table to receive a meal, he had a napkin, he had a linen cloth, and then as he was enjoying his meal, and it's time to, to finish up, one of two things would happen in regard to that napkin, according to, according to Jewish custom, if you will. That napkin, if it was wadded up and was placed down next to the plate, indicated that he was through with the meal. And it was okay for the servant to come in and clean up. But if that napkin was folded up precisely and placed in a certain manner, that was to indicate to the servant, I'm not finished. I am coming back. I am coming back. And Jesus Christ said, Behold, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again. And beloved, I believe personally that's the significance of that napkin that was set aside. Right. Yeah. Jesus is like, you know what? The redemptive work is finished, but I'm coming back for the church. I'm going to go prepare a place for you. I am going to come back. And I believe that's the significance of that. Now, I know in the theological community and uh, 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 other, others, they'll, they'll argue that point, but I believe with all my heart that's why that portion of Scripture is there for us and given to us that Jesus Christ is coming again. Amen. Uh, the Jews required a sign. They required a sign. He left that as a sign to them. I am coming back. I am coming back. Now the Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 15-17, through 17, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Now I understand that the word rapture is never used in this portion of Scripture. I get it, I understand it. But the very definition of that calling out or that catching away of the church is mentioned right here this very truth. Jesus Christ is coming again. Amen. And beloved, the reason He's coming back, <laughs> the reason He's coming back is because He ain't in the grave. Amen. He's alive forevermore. He's resurrected. He's living. And He's Sitting at the right hand side of the Father. He's making intercession for you and I. He's preparing a place for us. Amen. Because He is coming yes. back. Amen. He is Amen. coming back. Bless God. I don't know about you, but we got a lot of rejoice about this morning as children of God. Amen. 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 And not only this morning, but every day, Amen. these truths are with us. They're real. Because He can come back at any day, at any time. Amen. Amen. And so this Resurrection Sunday, this Easter morning, yes. I hope that it is settled in your heart. What wonderful truths we have from the Word of God. How important, how vital, how significant the resurrection of Jesus Christ yes. is in each and every one of our lives yes. here today. Yes. It applies to us all that are redeemed, that are saved. Yes. And friend, if you're here this morning, it applies to you if you're lost and never been saved. Because he did come out of the grave. Amen. You know, that was God's way of showing his approval of the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. His sacrificial death dying on the cross. His resurrection was God's acceptance of the death of his only begotten Son. Amen. And so there's good news. If you're here and you've never trusted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you can be saved today. Amen. You can be saved today. The Word of God says, Behold, now is accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. Don't wait another day because you and I are not promised tomorrow. Get saved today while it is today. Amen. Well, that's all I have for us this morning. And at this time, I'd like to invite everybody, if you would, to stand, please. Everyone's standing. Everyone's heads bowed. Everyone's eyes closed. I'll ask a question here this morning as the musicians make their way to the instruments. I'll ask a question.